Welcome in everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? Looking at a looking at an L in the column tonight. Not super pumped about it, but it is what it is. Welcome in everybody. How you doing, Strong? How you doing, Gavin? <clears throat> All right, we are live. This is the uh, post game show, the Atlanta United Fan TV. Ooh, I'm still kind of digesting. Unfortunately, you know, we've learned nothing from this game. We weren't really going to learn anything from this game unless we had won somehow. <laughs> I think that maybe would have given me an interesting data point. But losing to this team, when we had no DPs, they had their DPs. They were home, we were away. I think the script wrote itself at that point. So I'm not super surprised. I don't think anyone should be. Um, it just stinks because it's like a game you just kind of want to have to get through and move on because it's chalked up to international break. You're just not going to win this. Kind of like how the title of the episode is is alluding to. Um, it's just what you want to get through it and move on to the next one because then you can continue to learn what this team's about. Because this game, I don't think you learned anything. And now uh, I'll bring on AJ. He's going to come in here. And he's going to tell us everything going through his head at this very moment. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, I hear you. Uh, that's, you know, you think we didn't really learn too much from this match. I think we learned some things, but uh, we'll get Learn to me. Learn me up. I'll learn your main. Uh, yeah, I mean, but uh, it's not what we want to learn. That's the thing. These are not fun things to learn. This is the uh, th these are the medicine that uh, we have to take as MLS fans, apparently. Anyway, according to Don Garber, because that's really the crux of it is that we do not have to go through this, but instead we play through international breaks with six first team players out uh, and another one that's injured that's with notwithstanding that has nothing to do with the international break but uh, you know so the the six first teamers that's a big issue a lot of teams are facing that too and then you have <laughs> this is the the main thing about this is that this is how hard it's uh, it is to win on the road Messi uh, I mean, you know, Inter Miami not playing uh, in terms of uh, Messi not playing for Inter Miami uh, you know, this weekend, but they lost four nil against New York Red Bulls, who are not exactly like lighting it up. Yeah, I uh, mean, it was still Jordi Alba, the still, still Busquets. I don't know if Suarez played, but I mean, those are still top quality players who lost to Red Bull away. Exactly, and that just shows you how difficult it is to win on the road. Uh, you know, a team that, well, as well, has played more games than anybody. But, yeah, for us, on the road here, you know, it's another L on the road. Uh, you know, that's nothing new. But I think what we see tonight is that the guys who are a little further down on the death chart or, you know, not in the 11, it's difficult for them to step in and make a mark. Uh, one, because they don't have the match fitness. And then two, you also see the deficiencies where, why they aren't starting. And uh, and so, yeah, it's not not to be too harsh on them because we shouldn't. It's, uh, you know, left back, uh, you know, the person that played at... Uh, central attack and midfield for us as well. I'm, I'm trying not to name names because I don't think they deserve flack. But, um, 
you know, our starting left winger tonight, our starting striker. It's, uh, you know, our starting right center back. Like, it's just, you see some glimpses in terms of, um, you know, the, uh, the little flashes of why they are being considered, at least the, the homegrowns. Uh, I thought Wolf had a very good uh, cross in for the chance from Saba. Uh, I thought, for the most part, Cobb was pretty calm on the ball. Uh, Dax McCarty was trying to make a lot of things happen from midfield, from deep, trying to be that kind of midfield general and uh, direct people where to go and uh, you know where to be, who to mark. But yeah, I mean, it's just we were chasing shadows. Like, we had some chances. I mean, Saba, you know, obviously our our best player uh, left. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, he looked the most dangerous. But also a glaring omission in Shonda Silva, which I can maybe understand too, in that he, you know, was a little too loose with his passes, and maybe it was a little bit of punishment for that for uh, against Orlando City. But yeah, we just looked as disjointed as possible as as they come, really. And uh, yeah, I mean, Tra, you know, gives some energy, but just the hold up play is, is not really there. And uh, Rio's coming in later; he's just kind of showed how it's done a little bit. He uh, he definitely looked a lot more assured in kind of connecting the rest of us the rest of the lines you know and yeah I mean it's just besides besides the uh, some of the very sloppy play um, you know we just I, I think there were some bad takes out there too though Like there, I see a lot of people blaming Brad Guzan tonight on uh, some of the social media and I'm just like what what could he really done for those goals? Uh, I mean, yeah, he could have parried it, you know, out. I mean, yes, he, uh, he could, probably could have, uh, in terms of the parry, maybe kept it a little closer to him. But I mean, he he, he did the save first. Yeah, he did what he had to do to stop a goal, and that's what came cool. of it. And the rest is on the defense to take care of. Okay. But to mop up and yeah. they they were flat footed they they led you know uh, yet another <laughs> uh, for the first goal yet another guy you always harp this and it reared its ugly head again today another kid scores his first goal against us on the road just it's a drinking moment I know they just take shots yeah. Every time that happens, it's like a bingo card. Yeah. It's so annoying. Yeah. Whenever I see a, yeah. a, a, a kid starting on another team for the first time, I'm like, "Here it comes." <laughs> Here it comes. Yeah, super draft pick, just drafted this year, gets his first chance, scores his first goal, and but, he looked great too. He looked really yeah. good, Spicer. He was yeah. really, really rocketing down the side, and he's got a cannon for a leg. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. It's like, yeah, I think they they saw that uh, opportunity, and then after they yeah scored that second goal, they just smelled blood. But uh, luckily, we didn't concede another goal, but we almost <laughs> yeah the post saved us as well. So we were we were lucky at some points too. Oh yeah, but uh, boy, yeah, it's uh it's just that type of match where it's like. Okay, that's the information you get, but it's also, yeah, you know, does this, like, I, I've been harping on this because this is something that absolutely needs to be considered. How does this progress the league? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, you have all your best players away, uh, pretty much, and then, if not, you have some guys that were spurned uh, for their international clubs. And then what does this do psychologically to the players that are left? When you have 
all those players that are like, okay, well, we got to step in. Okay, yeah, sure. You know, mentality, the mentality monsters, sure. But <laughs> you know that if you're a good player that's away and you see your team just like absolutely shit the bed <laughs> when you're not there, it's like, well, damn. Okay, well, you come back, you can banter your, you know, your teammates and everything, but you know, ultimately, <laughs> you know that okay, well, you know, should I take this league very seriously? Like, why? Why are we, like? Does every game really even matter? It's at this point. Yeah, when you go on international duty, okay, yeah, you, you know, you're playing for your country and. You know, that's very important, but why is, like, it looks very, very, like, Bush League. It looks very minor league. It looks very, it looks very lower division. Amateur. Yeah. When you're playing through international breaks. Like, it just, it, you're asking to be an afterthought. Like it, it's just, yeah. I understand why we're doing it, right? <laughs> but it doesn't mean that it's good for the league. Yes, they're just cost, you know, cost benefit analysis is what they're they're doing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll try to have happier thoughts, but it is yes, <laughs> that is the elephant in the room. You know, like that needs to be said before we mm -hmm. say anything else. If we're so anyway let's carry on yep. what are they saying Jeff? let's see uh, Sean says could have been better Merrick Gollin says uh, at least we didn't get hammered versus Toronto that's true didn't get hammered it wasn't 6-1 drubbing like we had in Columbus Lightning says or Drew says games like these just leave me empty uh, Shonk also says a draw would have been fine as well. Pretty much what we expected. Jack says, yeah, I agree. Strong, like it's like if, if we, cause I feel like one goal was us switching off the first one. That was three guys not able to close down a new <laughs> brand new player to the league. Uh, so like that was on us. We should have done more there. The midfield. Yeah. And then, yeah, there should have, there, there was a missed tackle in midfield. Like, mm -hmm. on the wing, pretty much. Like, and then another missed tackle. And then Lennon having to chase. Not really his fault. But, yeah. Like yeah, because I think kind of Cobb... Out. Yeah, exactly. Cobb got beat, and then that was the way that cookie crumbled. Um, mm -hmm. But the second goal, I think, was fine on Toronto's. They earned that one. Um, so, 1-0, I feel like, should have been the result. And I wouldn't have been too upset about it. Uh, but two zero felt. We split the difference. <laughs> we split the difference. You uh, you called I think one nil loss. Yeah. You were optimistic, and I called a three nil loss. It's yeah. I mean it's it's there. Yeah. Uh, um. Let's see. It's hard to see. <laughs> Gavin. Hard to see where the goal is coming from. Yeah. 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 Uh, Gavin says AJ looks dripped out. Very nice. Dripped. Um. Interesting. He hasn't said anything about my style, but thank you. Um, Strong says, I think we learned we can lose with dignity now and not get steamrolled. I mean, eh, to a degree, there's some resiliency being shown, I suppose. that. But then again, I also yeah. think about how Toronto is not a good team. So, Yeah, I mean, it's, they, they've had a better start to their season. They're not, yeah. you know, uh, leading the wooden spoon. But, uh, right. you know, I think the talent on that team, it was a matter of motivation, not a matter of how talented that team actually was. So, okay. Well, I, I don't know if you heard the commentators after the game or the way TFC was acting after the game, but you would think that they had won the MLS Cup with beating Atlanta at home. So it was kind of mm -hmm. silly. Um, eh, I mean, I think this is the thing. It's like, okay, when you when you play for like a long while and you haven't won, like, yeah, you're going to – you should cheer your yeah. – happy moments because you don't know when your next one is coming so you know i i am i'm not a celebration police person like, yeah and i mean and they believe they're getting the monkey off their back i think the monkey is probably still firmly affixed but i'll let them think that 
for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, um, they can lull themselves into a false sense of, yeah. uh, of comfort. We'll that, see what uh, happens oh, yeah, if we, uh, when we play them at home later in the season. Um, so Bryson Cicero says, draw could have been our best result from this. I blame MLS for having games during international breaks. Yeah, absolutely. It punishes teams, in my opinion, for being good and ambitious, for getting team, you know, players that are regulars on their national teams. And then teams like us, uh, like was it Orlando and like three or so other teams had like six plus or like five plus guys gone. And that's pretty heavy. Um, so, yeah. and then meanwhile, you know, uh, you have FC Cincy who have Lucho Acosta who never leaves. So, yeah, because he's never going to get called into the Argentinian. Argentinian yeah, and national. you have, like we talked about last time, Darlington Nagby who never goes to national games and he's one of the best players in the league. Um, and then you have the, uh, you know, the Italians on Toronto tonight that are, you know, too old for Italy, but, you know, they're still very damn good. So it's. It's tough when, when you kind of get a draw like that. It would have been nice if the other team was suffering from like a poverty of players like we were tonight, um, but that was not the case. We got a full-strength team, so sucks to suck. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to uh, to be fair, uh, you know they were missing their starting goalkeeper, uh, well pointed out by Gavin yep. on our uh, five takes. So, you know, definitely... Yeah, I mean, they weren't exactly a full strength side either, but uh, yeah, when we don't have any DPs and they have two, it's like, even if they came off in the first half, it's like, still, we uh, <laughs> we were down a goal in the first half. Yeah, I mean, Bernadeschi stayed on the whole game. Exactly, and yeah. he looked far and away the best player on the pitch. Yeah, That's... I can't believe he didn't score. I, I was... <laughs> he, I he really choked hard. I, I was like, this guy... <laughs> He's pressing... <laughs> Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Guzan, he made a really good save mm -hmm. uh, with a kick save as well. And, uh, I mean, he was largely on it tonight. I mean, the, his one mistake was the, you know, parry that he didn't really, you know, I think parry out for a corner. Or, but it's ultimately still not really, really, like, his fault on that. So. Yeah. So Bryson says, not an upsetting performance, just a mad performance. I, I, I want to say, you know, before the first goal, before that calamity with those three players that couldn't close that guy down, Spicer down, um, I think no one had really or really made any glaring errors. I think we did pretty well overall, um, considering what we we're up against and what we put out there. Um, I was pretty pleased with it, even though, yeah, Toronto seemed to be the ones attacking on the front foot and trying to pin us and they were and that's fair it's to be expected even if we were at full power that's still there's a chance that that happens because we're away but you know we kept it to zero zero for a, a good bit and then you know that we switch off we made that mistake there and then toronto scores um after that we you know played a little bit more stretched out um we tried to go for some more desperate balls and like for instance Dex McCarty's passes were pretty bad um Tristan's were mm. pretty good but like th for the most part a lot of our passes were intercepted or didn't make it where they were supposed to go Dax being probably the chiefest of uh you know people to indict on that um which was kind of surprising because he's supposed to be more of a you know solid cementer of the midfield but and like you know holding on possession interestingly enough we did win the possession battle this game which is interesting at 54 percent um so that's nice and it and it was uh I, I think gavin said in the discord it had shades of looking a little like the columbus game where you know in the second half we you know kind of stormed back a bit won the possession game from them and had some chances but we just weren't able to convert similarly happened this game too we had a couple chances we did storm back and take the possession, but we failed to convert once again. I, I think context is very key there, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, like it's listless possession because basically they uh, they didn't exactly park the bus, but it was they sat in a lower block uh, when they basically challenged us to break them down, and you know, after they went up two nil, it was just yeah, <laughs> they knew that we didn't have the goods yeah. because. Yeah, you know, we don't have the operators that can 
in this uh, in this eleven or on the pitch. And I think it was that it was you know a lot of passing around the back and you know I think Ronald Hernandez we need to not see him at left back. It's just <laughs> he it's not his position. His left foot is just not really. Um, he, he, it'd be different if he was playing a little bit more interior and playing more as a midfielder, but he's not. And so, you know, a lot of times he's just hoofing it forward with his left foot. And it's yeah. just, it's not helping us. It was a lot of hoofing, just, a lot of failed clearances on our part. You know, yeah. it was desperation, like I was talking about. Um, and right. Toronto would just get well, the ball back and come right back at us again. Right. And, but some of our uh, our best play, uh, I think, came down on the right because yeah, yeah Lennon Saba still looked and look very, uh, you know, connected. They look like they know where each other are wanting to be, and you know they can kind of telepathically, you know, so to speak, uh, kind of know where each other is going to be. And then, yeah, one of our best chances was uh, also where Lennon was able to cross it into Tiare and, you know, Tiare was able to uh, get a header on goal, but uh, yeah, just wasn't, you know, low enough or uh, hit hard enough to get it past the keeper. But yeah, I mean, I think I count like, like two of the, those are the better chances, the Sapa chance, yeah. the Tiare chance. And that's really it. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> if you'll really only have two chances on the road and, uh, you know, you're, you, you don't really get a good shot off. Uh, this is really a that's yeah. murder she wrote. Yep. Um, so, all right, we're going to get our guests going soon in a second with Ethan coming in first. So, Ethan, when you're ready, hop in. Uh, I'm going to read some of these real quick. Uh, uh, if this game was our full team, it would have been very different. We all know it's ridiculous we play during international breaks. Yeah, I think so, and I think we'll see – I think if we play them again later in the season, it'll definitely be different. Uh, Sniper19 says, Team looked toothless for most of the match, but too many errors down the left with Guzan keeping this remotely close. He had some good saves tonight. Um, Gavin also says, Thing is, even if Toronto were full strength, there would have been really no difference. I don't see Sean Johnson letting any of our shots on goal in. Do we have any shots on goal? I think we had three, but you know they were pretty weak. Um, yeah. Sniper19 says, Hernandez looked rusty, but I can f- but I can fault his form. Moyumba was below par with his dribbling. Easy to say most of this was form rust. Uh, yeah, to a degree, but I mean, we also kind of know that some of these players make these same mistakes every time they come out. It's kind of to be expected, um, especially with Hernandez. Um, I'm not so sure it's rust. I think it's kind of not a, a bug, but more of a feature for him. Um, mm-hmm. Brian Baird says Hernandez ain't it. Uh, Callen Carr is the worst color commentary guy in MLS. <laughs> I, mean, I don't hate. I don't hate that guy. Um, yeah, no. I mean, I, I think there's there's much worse. I, I'm I'm okay with Kalen Carr. Uh, you know, I mean, he's maybe not the most like fully informed, nor does he maybe pronounce every single player always correctly. But you know, not uh, they have a tall task. Yeah. To, to be fair. Like they, have, <laughs> they they basically have to learn, you know, every team and a new team every week because yeah, they don't keep them on the same assignment. It's it's a little perplexing, to be fair, actually, on that. Like I'd it's it would probably be smart for them to actually like, okay, you guys cover the, the West Coast more more or less and then you guys can cover the, the right? East Coast more. Yeah. Yeah. And uh you know, you guys learn these teams, you guys learn those teams, uh, you know, and then if there's, you know, yeah, some West Coast teams will be playing East Coast teams, but, I mean, this was on all East Coast, and he's largely, he's played for, you know, Houston. So he knows the West a little bit more. It's like, yeah, keep him on the West. Right. But, all right. Let me... Ethan will come out. Hey, how's it going? What's up, what's up? Uh, yeah, is he, uh, is he in there? He's about to be. Okay. Right. He's about to be. Da, 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 da. How you doing, Ethan? I'm doing okay. 
Doing only okay? Just, just decent, yeah. <laughs> just decent? That's fair. Let me All it's... right. Let me get your... Uh... Not exactly a game full of excitement, I would say. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so, Ethan, tell us about what you thought about this game. Um, I think my, my biggest... I think the, the best way to like summarize it is that it wasn't that bad. In that, I think no one had no no one was expecting us to win. I think the the expectation was pretty low, so it wasn't it wasn't six one to Columbus, um, like last year's first international break. Um, I think there were times when we just completely lost control, though. Um, Toronto just control all the tempo. Had so much momentum at home, and then the momentum would build, and then with the crowd, especially in break when they scored the goal, I think that kind of happened both halves. Like I think it was decently even for a portion, and then there was like a ten-minute period in each half when Toronto completely just controlled the game, and then it ultimately led to both goals. Um, but I mean, this this what's going to happen when you're missing seven players five stars i think and it's gg and almada mm -hmm. the runner-up golden boot winner and assist leader last season so uh question i think two, two -0 wasn't that bad though. yeah it, it, objectively i don't think it's that bad i feel like it should have been one zero but because we only really in my opinion made one terribly glaring mistake but uh I think uh, I have a qu so I have a question for you. Do you think you would rather have our international break games played at home, or would you continue to rather have them be away? I'd say I'd say I'd probably just go away. Um, I, I'd rather stick with the high probability, exciting games at home and make sure we keep that as like our fortress, as we, we always say, um, and keep the, like, if we if we go and have those games at home and get in the habit of every once in a while having a bad loss like that, it, like, ruins the stigma of that, the the stadium, how, how it's our fortress. So mm -hmm. I'd say have some bad road games and hope, I mean, you're, you're expected to lose on the road anyway, so... Uh, yeah, no, it's it's a really uh, it's a fair point. I think that's exactly I think the sentiment that probably most people would have is because it's just tough. Like you don't want to see that. Like, would you want to see that performance and pay for everything and go there and you know if you park, ride Marta, all those things, and then just have that in front of you? It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. So, I mean, it, it is that. And, yeah, you made a great point in that. Yeah, it's like, basically, it's it's our whole entire spine. Like, we don't have Gregerson. We don't have Sleesh. We don't have uh, Almada. We don't have Yakumakis. It's it's a big, <laughs> like, those are our biggest players. And, and Cohen yeah, could, I mean, could very likely, in the future, be called away to the United States as well. Possibly, yeah. I, I think Cohen. Um, no. I think yeah. He's he's definitely got a little bit of ways because obviously, yeah. uh, you know, he's got to get into the team first, and then you know, in terms of our team, and then mm -hmm. possibly. But uh, yeah, he's got to show out too. But uh, yeah, I know <laughs> that's a that's a possibility in the future. But uh, yeah, what did you see that maybe encouraged you? Well, for one thing, I, Guzan, I thought he was, did very well. Um, even though he gave up two, I thought there was, I mean, the big chance with Berndeski at the end, or relatively towards the end, um, I thought there were a couple of big saves I wasn't really expecting. I guess kind of just thinking back to last year, but um, so that, that was positive too, because I think even in general this season, he's done better than we most of us expected. Um, Brooks Lennon also was he had some great um, crosses I thought just been very reliable 
Um, those are my two mm. favorite right now. Yeah, it's not super easy to find super, like great positives in it. Like I said, in a game where we're not going to learn that much from. So, you know, it is it is what it is. You know, call a spade a spade sometimes. I, I will say, um, Dax McCarty, I thought he did decent. There were a couple, like, errant passes, but um, towards, like, the second half of the game, I thought he did a better job of keeping things moving and, um, like, helping out in the midfield. And yeah, When he wasn't so trying on, to do, like, long ball passes, I thought he was fine. Yeah. But when he tried those, it was a turnover or a missed cue every time. But I guess my main point in that is that as a backup, that's okay. I, yeah, I absolutely. Like Completely agree. Compared to last year, especially when we were praying for a competent midfielder, I guess. Yeah, I would take Dax over either of who we had last time. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, I think, a much better performance than I think many of the players that we had last year. Uh, so, I mean, and that's really what it is, is that uh, obviously, you know, if you play against the likes of a Columbus crew, also in those conditions, but, you know, a 6-1, that makes sense. Against a Toronto, who was, you know, the wooden spoon last year, this also makes sense when you trot out essentially a USL side. So it's, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if there is something that you feel like... Uh, there's a player that you thought, okay, yeah, there's something there that we can bring forward for a game in the future. Yeah, what do you want to see more of? Uh, I mean, Saba, he's been... I thought he was good. Um, he's been cutting in a lot and creating some chances. Got, some, got a couple shots off tonight, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I think were blocked but still um what about from the replacement what about from the replacement core that we had out there oh um um <laughs> if you want to answer with night none know. of them that's fine too <laughs> yeah i guess i guess mccarty yeah okay yeah. that's fair yeah. I, I thought like daniel sure. rios had an interesting couple moments but that's about it uh, i mean yeah he had some good build-up play i thought i think he did a better job of like holding up the ball than i've seen tiara do yeah so, yeah but it's just like again like, a little sample size so i need to see more but yeah, yeah i agree it's looked slightly better so that's a little like why did we go with jamal but I, I i can kind of get why but it's still like i don't know is, yeah rios isn't match fit so it's like yeah but uh, I think on a large hole, it's like, okay, you know, TRA did have a shot on goal, but ultimately, you know, if you want to bring in some of your other players, especially if Yakumakis isn't in, okay, well, incorporate, you know, if Amada's in, if Saba's in, if Silva's in, I'm okay with that because TRA uh, not really seeing how he really connects the team. It's pretty much like when he's in there, it's pretty much you only have a back line midfield and then your forward line is just kind of hung out to dry so but we also haven't seen a lot of tra but he also yeah i mean he he somehow escaped i think a yellow yeah but, uh, <laughs> but it is kind of that thing but, you got uh, a defender to get a yellow instead which is not what i was exactly. expecting not at all <laughs> But, uh, but Ethan, yeah, what are your final thoughts on this match? I think we'll come back. I mean, I don't think you should take too much away from it. My, I uh, wrote this in the Discord, and, like, there wasn't, I don't think there was that much at stake, really. We, the expectations were so low, I feel like you shouldn't, we shouldn't be too negative about this. Like, yes, we could, okay, we should have won, whatever, but... I don't. That's unrealistic. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Full squad at LA United is much is a completely different team. So, um, I think don't don't too, like, take too much stock into the performance this game. Yeah, that makes sense. Completely agree. 
Yeah, but I hear you, but then it's also why are the stakes not higher? Like that that's the point, right? Like that's that should be why we're watching. You know, if if we're talking about from an entertainment standpoint, we're being robbed <laughs> of actual entertainment. And I mean uh, I'm gonna get on a little bit of a soapbox just for a minute here, but in these like really tough times for a lot of people, right? Like there's a lot of people struggling, you know, with whichever, you know, whether financially, emotionally, anything. And you know, this is this is a luxury to be able to be watching soccer on a Saturday and you know, not worry about other problems and whatnot and and all that. And we want to be able to be entertained. But ultimately, we're being robbed of the actual peak entertainment that this league can actually offer. That That's upsetting. <laughs> like, it's not like we, we get a discount for these away matches. You know, it's like we're paying the same. When we have three away matches in a month, we're paying the same. So... Like, that's right. That's right. Uh, AJ wants a la carte games. That's what <laughs> right? we're gonna go I mean, with next time. No, no. Well, that's not what I mean. But obviously, that's what it is. Is that, yeah, you know, like there's an aspect of this that's they're just taking for granted. They're thinking that, oh yeah, people, everyone's just gonna be here forever. Yeah. Well, it. I just keep thinking in the back of my mind. They're just like, well, League's Cup. We're we're doing all this because League's Cup. So. Right, and that for the one month that they're cashing in, okay, great, great for them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's in their mind. They're like, "This is how we grow the league," because then we take yeah. that money and theoretically reinvest it into the league. But I have yet, we've yet to see that happen. What? Yeah, exactly. Like that's uh, no, uh, it's uh, there's there's a lot of problems. But anyway, yeah, uh, that's so, that's not Ethan. Not if you have it. one final thought on what AJ just said, I think we can yeah, let well, you go. So if you're if you're the front office and we're playing in this league that doesn't take the breaks, like you would you say we don't get players who play for international teams or it's a question. Yeah, no, it's a great question, but uh, I think it's nothing on the front office because they're doing the best thing that they can, but the league is not being, I think friendly to the types of teams that want to spend money on international level players so it should help it's the punishing them for being ambitious yeah right and so instead we should be going for the lucho costas and darlington nagby's of the world who somehow magically <laughs> they're because of an embarrassment of riches for their national team and or slash they don't want to play for the national yeah, nagby is just such like, a weird case right that's those are unicorn players that 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 is it sustainable, nor is it replicable, nor is it yeah. like... And, and lo and behold, that. like every team he's been on, they've won. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> right. Like, is there a correlation? Maybe. But there's also like, yeah, there's four rings that says, okay, it's a pretty strong correlation. Yeah, In a league that's supposed to have parity, that's a strange yeah. thing to me. Yeah. But anyway, all right, anyway. Ethan, we'll let you go. Um, we don't want to uh, keep you too much longer with another one of uh, AJ's old man complaining <laughs> corners. Old man rants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Love it. All right. Thanks. Alrighty. Take care, Ethan. Take See you next time. See ya. Have a good one, man. Thanks so much. All right. We'll be having another guest up in a minute. Let me check the... Let's check the Let's chat. Let's check the chat. Um, da, 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 da. Sniper19 says, Still sad to see Insigne go down injured as he is a star. That draws eyes to the league. Looks sort of bad like a strained hamstring. Uh, but for us, I wish we capitalized on them losing their star. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to see any player get injured, obviously. That would obviously is not what I want. I'm not like a sadist. so. But it we did not capitalize. And I don't think we really could have. It's not it like Insigne is making them more defensively stout. So it is what it is with that. So um, we are about to be joined by the one and only Gavin. 
Gavin, how you doing? Welcome in. Could be better, obviously. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> doing pretty good. Yeah, do a decent man. Have 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 your yeah. thoughts. Okay. Um, this game meant nothing. No, nothing learned. Nothing learned. Um, th to me, this was like, like let's say an NBA Finals game. Let's say the other team already won the NBA Finals. We played an unnecessary game. Like, none of the players we had, or full 11, weren't even playing, so nothing we could do about it, and there'd be no difference made even if Toronto had their full 11, but I just don't understand why we have to play during this time. Not cool. Well, you and, and Tata Martino are in the same boat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know how you could have done better. I mean, Toronto simply beat you fair and square. I mean... Only thing that wasn't fair is just MLS letting us play during a time like this. I don't know. Do you think we just, think do you think with a it, do you think with like a point five seven expected goals that we should have probably been able to sneak one goal in and do a smash and grab? Well, we had chances here and there. I feel like the only chance we actually had just like actually scoring a goal was early in the first half because. Most of the times in the second half where we had a shot on goal or like any chance, it was like in traffic and Lopchnita had a shot in the uh, first half. It was like some volley. Yeah. But that was the only one time where there was no one really around him, but it was a tough shot. But not really. I mean, in the second half, it, it, got, it got better. It got a lot better. But Toronto was standing to a shot and couldn't really score after that either, even uh, with our very late sub. Rios made a debut a little too late. And yeah, Silva did what he could, but I mean, didn't really impress me at all time. Yeah, isn't it the most whitest of white flags when you put on Etienne? Yeah. It's just. <laughs> That's just yeah. Uh, giving him time. You're just giving him playing time. That's it. Yeah, because I don't know what he did. And to be honest, I mean, I don't want to rag on him too hard because uh, it was his first start. But yeah, I mean, Nick Firmino absent didn't really do much he uh, got bodied so. off the ball multiple times like yeah, boy you need to hit the gym or outplayed. something he got outplayed. yeah and his touches were pretty heavy it, it's yeah i mean i think you know he's just uh he's a player just like noah cobb uh just like tyler wolf that yeah they could do with more playing time at the twos uh to you know, be more match fit, more game fit, sharp. Uh, actually, learn some of the, uh, you know, with some more experience. But it's also you don't learn that at this level. Some of the things, and unless you play at this level, so yeah, it's tough too. But it's yeah, because um, I, I mean, yeah, Noah Cobb. You know, it's one of those. He, there were some things that he could have like done better, but it is still you see the glimpses, you see why he got a homegrown contract. But, uh, but Gavin, yeah, who were some players that you felt like you know uh, kind of at least you want to see more of? Um, I felt like Mosquera did fine when he came on. He did okay. He was producing chances. Got good speed. Uh, he won corners, but we did not take corners well at all tonight nothing going on it was really windy I'm not using any excuses but it just weren't really taking well um Saba did well uh I mean he was probably our only player to watch tonight he was probably the our best player tonight to be fair and uh I don't know maybe Lennon Lennon a good efforts there too um Lennon's always solid getting body up the ball he's always solid he's the most unappreciated like player in the, like one of the most unappreciated in the league in my opinion. Like, yep. his name's not really ever out there anymore. AJ's yeah, essay's coming soon on it. He's going to write a whole a thesis yeah. about it. Because, yes, so many of our fans don't rate him. And it's it's a little baffling because I, I get it from year one to year two, but, like, these past two years, three years, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's, it's – he, he's done some – like things that uh, no other fullback has done. So, in terms of LA United history, but anyway, um, okay, yeah. So M Mosquera, I mean, because yeah, he did look really bright when he came on. 
uh, was trying to make things happen, and he definitely he dragged us further forward. And sometimes to the byline, sometimes to you know the box where we try to fashion some chances. But it, yeah, Toronto's it defense looked lackluster too. They didn't look really that you know robust. I think a good team could have easily gone after them. So. I, you know, throwing Edwin right there is perfectly fine by me. I mean, he could have gotten somewhere, could have gotten something going. So, yeah. perfectly okay with you doing know, that. And he, it was always going to be Edwin coming in anyway. So, like, it's, you know. Yeah, he's one of the first names off the bench in terms of that. But that's what was interesting is that if it's Domasquera and also Saba and Silva were on. And so, I think Saba was the one that moved a little bit more interior. But, um, yeah, no, actually, but at times, I think they were also swapping, too. Uh, Silva was a little bit more interior than Saba uh, on the left wing. But, uh, yeah, I think it's an interesting feature. Like, okay, if you don't have Almada and Firmino maybe isn't showing what we want him to, hmm, maybe it's one of those that, you know, in a pinch, do we continue that? Mm-hmm. Hmm. But uh, but yeah, as far as questions go for you, Kevin, uh, yeah, is there is there something that uh, you feel like, uh, like I asked Ethan as well, but you know, something that you saw from this match that you feel like okay, this is at least something that we can bring to our next match that uh, you know, we can replicate. Uh, uh I'm not. It's it's hard to find it out of this match because we it, there's just nothing I didn't I didn't see much like we yeah. had uh few, we we've only had very few good chances but yeah. probably uh, I don't know maybe bring on subs earlier I don't know if you're gonna I don't know if the diff, what the difference would have been but before we were down two 0 and that's a slam door shut but. I mean, I like what no, I like what I saw before we went down two 0 We were starting to like build into the game until they scored, which was very unfortunate. I, I liked what we did before they got their second goal. If we could just do more of that, whatever that was, then we can probably yeah. do better going into Sunday. But yeah. Tristan yeah. was Tristan was playing, you know, more on the, uh, on higher up the field. He was in the more like kind of attacking position. I like to see that when he's higher up, but. Um, I know, like, Sleese and him like to switch off with that, so it's not always the case, but I don't know. Seeing Tristan all the way up is, is exciting sometimes, so that's that's something I like to see, and I'd like to see more of, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting because usually um, when I went to the match, um, I saw, I mean, usually it's either Wiley or Lennon making those runs up there when that's not entirely their natural, like, their normal position, but... I think Leonbo is probably just like just filling in for that because we didn't have he knew he doing that. Like, really I, I've noticed this yeah. in some games. It's especially when we're you know, we, we're playing depth pieces mainly. Uh, uh, some of the veteran players will say, "I need to take this game by the scruff and you know light a fire. I need to be the one who you know sparks something." And so I thought like when Hernandez did that random like a uh, skied shot i'm like okay he's he's at least saying i'm gonna try something um like some of these players do these th- these like unorthodox things to try and get something going and unfortunately most of the time it doesn't work but once in a while it does and they i guess that's nice to see that you know like tristan thought i need to take this by the scruff i need to try and make something happen that's good initiative from our veteran players that i think we maybe didn't have a lot of Mm-hmm. In the past, yeah, no, definitely agree because Muyumba, yeah, he he get, got further forward on the left, and uh, yeah, there was a moment when he was attacking that looked pretty competent, like it looked controlled and looked like he was trying to, uh, you know, pull him back, you know, so that uh, you know somebody near the box could uh, go attack it, but yeah, it's still. The, the attack looked a little flat-footed at times, too. And, uh, yeah, when Hernandez shot, I mean, I get why he shot. Because it's like, yeah, everybody else just wasn't moving. So, okay, well, I'll just take a pop. But it's a left-footed shot. Like, bro, you're, you're right-footed. 
you're like 40 yards out like that's as hidden hope as it gets like it's just not a good decision yeah and it's uh, ultimately like he needs to have I think been a little bit more patient find the right ball because it was still in a moment where yeah we had we had possession and is that Arnett is being frustrated do you think that was out of frustration? Maybe, but I think it's like, you know, if he's a veteran, like we say he is. Well, then, yeah, yeah, that would be that's well, bad to me. That's very bad to me if he's getting frustrated like that and then responding yeah, in this way. Right. That's just not the right decision. It's just uh, nine times out of ten, you know, pretty much ten, ten, ten times out of ten, your right-footed left back should not be taking a shot at at forty yards. <laughs> Even if there's not any options, like recycle back, recycle back if you must. Like, but um, yeah. Well, final thoughts, Kevin. Um, I think this loss. I mean, I saw it coming from a mile. I'm sure almost everyone did. Uh, I don't think anything was really Guzan's fault. Really, I mean, he had a solid match. People are saying Cohen should start. Uh, we'll see it sometime. Maybe League's Cup or if Guzan does get hurt, uh, we'll see that. But I think all we need to do is get back on track next Sunday against Chicago, and I think we'll be fun. I'm, I think we'll I think we'll pick up right where we left off. Um, Chicago are better this season, but with our full eleven, I think we're definitely capable of beating them. But um, I had one question for you guys before I go. Hmm. Um, let's say. If we had our full 11 for this game and so have Toronto, would we have pulled a positive result out of this one? Yeah, I think so. Yes. yes. We're talking like a draw or a win or like... Draw minimum. I that. think we would probably... Exactly. I think it would be like a... Uh, I think probably 2-1, maybe 2-0 us. That would probably be my guess. Hmm. Yeah, it could be. I mean, if Steven Gregerson wasn't... Uh, yeah, injured. if we had full, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, because yeah, you know, I would, yeah. Because let's say the the hypothetical, like, okay, Gregerson is actually injured because he is, uh, but we were not in an international break. Well, then, yeah, I think it probably was like two, two, three, two. So, yeah, but it's uh, it's a different story, obviously. But yep, yeah. well, yep, Gavin, appreciate your thoughts, and uh, yeah. We will talk to you next time. Great to night. Yep. Match day always gets better, win or lose, when I come on here. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Love it. Thank Thank you. buddy. Yep. Thank you. See you, man. Yep. See you guys. All, All right. right. Let me read a little bit of this. <laughs> it didn't happen. It didn't happen this <laughs> <laughs> We'll read a little bit of this while we're waiting for our next guest. Um, Chris James says, was a big mountain to climb tonight. I understand the frustration, but sometimes you have to embrace the hurt. Yeah, uh, I mean, we know about embracing the hurt from a couple of years ago. Don't um, you know. Yeah, don't you know. Um, JN says, why do we struggle away from home so much? Um, it's, I mean, that, that's well, a bigger question because right now this game is not indicative of that underlying cause. Um, it, re, we, it still remains to be seen if we struggle away from home this season because Columbus is arguably one of the best teams in the league, if not the best team in the league. And we only lost by one to them and we scared them a bit. Whereas, you know, this game just doesn't freaking count in terms of analyzing it. So um, I think that that jury is still very much out. And I think we're probably going to be on the side of we're significantly better on the, on the road this year. So we'll see. Stay tuned. Yeah. And speaking of Columbus, they lost against Charlotte and that's wild. Yeah. That is truly wild. <laughs> so Dean's pulling some magic. His uh, his former Premier League uh, wisdom, maybe, maybe. In, uh, in that match. But anyway, Drew, welcome in. Let us have your thoughts. Uh, uh it just a uh, crap game, honestly. Just crap situation going on with the international break, and it just. It looked dead from start. We had a couple chances in there, but the majority of the game 
shifted toward Toronto, and we didn't play horribly, especially defensively. We had a couple lapses, and they were able to capitalize on them, uh, but not. There's nothing really to gain from the result of this game, honestly. Yeah. On that, though, I think there is, okay, yes, uh, you know, the lapses for the goals, but it is just the number of shots that we allow. I think it's from a game to game, we still allow a decent number of shots. And so luck is always going to come into play when you allow more shots. So, you know, us uh, being saved by the post, us being... Uh, maybe as well with the one-on-one -on -one that Guzan was able to save. Like, this could have been worse. <laughs> it actually could have been worse. But, uh, you know, we were able to, I think, defensively do enough to keep it to not an embarrassing drubbing. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's that. It's like, yes, you have a completely subbed inside pretty much but what what do you think was the message at the training grounds i have no idea honestly right it's tough it's, it's like, tough because <laughs> you would have thought that hey you know like pineda maybe Maybe he's trying to get them to just be a little bit more collectively stout. Uh, you know, not concede too many shots. We, yes, we don't have our attackers. Let's really play direct. But instead, I think we were playing, trying to play possession a lot. Yeah. We were. Yeah. And it's something that we talked about last year a lot, is that why are we trying to do this on the road? Yeah. Like it just, it clearly doesn't work. And then at home, we're being so vertical that it's so effective. And then we try to impose ourselves on the road. It just seems a little backwards. Yeah, I, I was surprised that we played like that. Um, I thought we would be more defensive and counter and work on transition moments, but... Um, I, I just, I get, and this is something I think, you know, it kind of goes back to what, you know, we've heard in the past from the likes of like Jason Longshore and what we kind of, um, uh, suppose that Pineda thinks is that, you know, the depth pieces or the, you know, the kind of the more lackluster teams we had in the past that we put out there, um, just are kind of incapable of really playing any other system than the one that's been drilled into them every day on the training ground. Um, and what Pineda has said in the in the press conference prior to this game was, we're going to play as we have always trained to play, as if there's no difference. Um, and, I mean, that made me... Because, like, when you, when you talk about, well, he played with verticality last game at home, I think it's because those players are able to adjust when they see things needing to be adjusted. Whereas these players and players we had in the past, I don't think they they have that. Or they're incapable or they're, you know, just... It's just too much for them in the moment. I don't know, but, you know. Mm. Well... It, it comes from the back, too, though. That's the thing. It's like, I, I, I know what you mean in terms of the forward line, but it comes from the back where Uzan, yes, he's pretty much directing his defenders what he wants them to do. And they're, they're not moving forward. They're trying to build out. And it's like, and the pace at which we're playing slows down which i think comes from the confidence comes from the ability on the ball because yeah you're not going to play one touch if you have a loose touch or can't play the ball forward and don't know where to be positionally to be that next person you know that you play the triangle with like but um yeah we'll pose the question to you that we've been posing did you see anything that's, uh, yeah, was something that you wanted to see more of? 
Uh, I liked Saba's game today. It, 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 he carried on from his last game. He he looked bright at times. He looked like he had good confidence going forward when he had chances. Uh, I liked Mascara off the bench. He he kind of doing what he did at the end of last year, being that impact sub coming off the bench, giving that twenty to thirty minutes of energy to the game trying to run it back lines which is not a bad thing for for tired going at tired back lines trying to get a result it's not a bad a bad player to have um Muyumba going forward he had a good game there were some defensive lapses i noticed from him weird positioning from him allowing toronto to get free chances but going forward he looked very good uh other than that there wasn't well Derek Williams Derek Williams again plays a decent game yes two got biased but it, looking at the goals I don't blame any on him he was trying to organize the back pretty well there it just unlucky for him that they went in honestly but other than that it kind of ho-hum for the rest of the team Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, yeah. As far as the, the performances go, yeah. I think those are great points. I mean, uh, Saba looked the most likely for sure. And, uh, you know, definitely kind of frustrated at times. Cut a, cut a frustrated figure for some of the balls that maybe weren't played or, you know, maybe the, the quality of the ball wasn't quite there. And, yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, like if he was playing with the the team that was fully in there, it'd be a different story. I wonder what this does psychologically to him a little bit. Because, yeah, he did score last match, but then it's, you know, he realizes, well, okay, the rest of the guys in this match, or in this 11, rather, um, you know, besides Lennon, are they able to get him the service that you know he would want so that that's part of it is that he wants to get back into the you know the Georgian national team like if I were him I would feel slighted because you know he, he was in there last year and then now he moved to LA United and then now he's not getting in there hmm like say, yeah we can hope for the best. We hope for him being absolutely pissed off and just going on a tear. Mm -hmm. Because if we see that sort of Saba that's just going, it's going to be very dangerous for other teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a bad thing for us per se. Uh, but it is, yeah, I hope it doesn't cause him to down tools and yes yeah hopefully that's the opposite effect but uh but drew yeah uh, let us have your final thoughts uh let's just forget this game for put it behind us uh, international break and let's look forward to chicago we'll have a better lineup there we'll have most of our guys back ready to go let's carry on from our matches at home, let's keep going because I think we can do a lot of damage this year and let's get a win. Yeah, we got to win all of our games at home. Got to win them all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. Yeah, no, it's an opportunity for, for three points and I think that's, yeah, the, uh, the mindset the players would probably have. It's probably the message that Pineda would have. Uh, and so, yeah. I think that's uh, the best way to look at it, for sure. I mean, but, uh, I, I mean I'm mean, i still, like, pretty optimistic. I, I mean, mm -hmm. we've won every game we were supposed to win, and we've lost every game we were supposed to lose this season so far. So, yep. mm -hmm. you know, I, there hasn't been one where it's been a toss-up yet. Um, that'll be really interesting to see how the team responds and plays that kind of game. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, no, there will be tougher tests at home, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Orlando City, we always knew it was going to fool school. So, you know, 
that thing. But uh, <laughs> any chance to get a dig in? <laughs> hey, but, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but is am I wrong? No, no, they probably wouldn't no. disagree either. Yep, yep. I think Orlando fans, uh, you know, whether they uh, they hate us or not, they uh, I think they would agree. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, um, all right. Well, Drew, thank you so much as always, and we love you. We will see you next time. Have a great rest of your night. Have a good night, guys. See you later. Thank you. All right, we have two more guests tonight. We're waiting for the next one to hop in. Please, everyone, get your comments, your questions, and everything in so we can read them on stream and hopefully come to some interesting answers for you. Um, Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Connor joining us. How are you doing, Connor? How did you think about the game? What's going on? I'm doing good. Let's see if my camera will come on. There we go. Should work now. It looks like it's trying. There it is. Hello. Hello, hello. How's it going? It's going well, man. But, uh, yeah, let's have this up on the match. There we go. Uh, disappointing. I, I feel disappointed, but I don't really know who to be disappointed at. <laughs> I'm not okay. disappointed well, that one try. person. <laughs> I'm more disappointed than just the overall, like, we didn't play amazing. I don't really feel like we should have played amazing because we were missing so many people. If we did play amazing, I was I feel like I would be completely shocked. But yeah. Other, otherwise, I just, like, I just feel disappointed in the situation we were given more so than anything else that that's why i said i will buy a commemorative item based on this game if we win because it's just like there's just no reason toronto with two like at one time like a world-class dp and you know basically they're not starting 11 but almost full starting 11 versus us extremely depleted and away i mean if we somehow pull a win out of there i mean it's toronto should literally just dissolve as a team and just Maybe pack it up and try again next year because that's just that's embarrassing. It would be. I, I think, yeah, the anger, if there was anger or upset, uh, you know, disappointment, should be directed at the league and Don Garber because that's fully what it is. Like that's who to blame. Like, you know, if there's anything about why we're playing, they hold the cards. But. Um, but yeah, in terms of other thoughts about the match, uh, you know. yeah. Yeah, um, let's see. I think, I think uh, defensively, I was pretty happy. I think Noah Cobb did all right. Um, I think uh, Derek Williams. I was like trying to get the lineup here. Exactly. Like, I'm 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 surprised with how well he's done for us so far. I mean, yeah. I've I was like whenever I first saw that signing, I was very meh. I was not optimistic at all, and I've been f- like I've been surprised with how well he's performed for us. And even tonight, I thought he had a couple good balls that he was playing out of the defense. He had one that was a little bit. Uh, I think he got intercepted, but it didn't really amount to anything. So it just comes with the territory. Um, mm-hmm. Defensively, Hernandez he looks better in a back three than he does in a back four. If we're gonna mm-hmm. do that ever. It needs to be a back three. Yeah. Four is not a hit. Him on the left and a back four is not a hit. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. It leaves a lot to be desired because uh, it's the the footedness, it's the awareness, it's the decision making, it's the positioning. It's a lot. It's it's pretty much yeah, pretty much every bit of it that he shouldn't be playing at left back. Like oh, yeah. I know we played him a lot there, but yeah, no. <laughs> I think a surprising one that I, I was just looking at the lineup again and I saw um, Firmino, he had a 7.0 on SOFA score. That's very surprising for me. A what? Out. That's crazy. Generous. That's His touches were very That's poor. Crazy. Uh, and he basically yeah. was not connecting any of the lines, nor did he create some chances. How did he get a 7? Yeah, can someone check on SOFA score, yeah. see if they're like, you know, yeah. working correctly? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sofa Thor, go home. You're drunk. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's go look at like one football. I'm just, I'm just gonna go through them now and see what it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. No, because if he's a seven, who? 
Like, what did the Toronto Bulls get? Yeah, right. Yeah, Spicer's got like a eleven right now. Spice, Spicer really? has a seven four. What? Okay, no, 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 no. That's no, 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 no. crazy. Yeah, they yeah, on okay. something. They on yeah, something. That's crazy. That's on one football. What does one football say about their performance? Because they don't even they don't even have uh, like ratings on here yet. So okay, like football. Okay. Mob. Mob have okay. Firmino at a six eight. So that's still generous. Man, I think I, I would give him a four. <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'm. I thought he. Was, I he did not look good. No. I, and and he's a. This is a player that, as a number ten, is a linchpin to your team, and especially with the way that we play. And for him to not show up and not do well, I mean, that's devastating for how we're trying to play our game. He was anonymous the first half. Like I, I, I try to pay attention to him, and I. Well, every like, time he paid attention to him, he got bodied off the ball. <laughs> exactly. And that was it. It was like, at one point, I forgot about him because he pretty much wasn't there. And then then I saw he, uh, yeah, got bodied off the ball at one point. And then he had the two heavy touches that he was trying to make something happen going forward. And it was just like, where have you been, man? <laughs> and Toronto's so, Toronto's team is it almost resembles like a basketball team. There's a lot of tall players on that team too. A lot of big boys. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I know. Yeah, with the uh, what's his name when he came on? Prince. Uh, Prince. Yeah, that man was a unit. Yeah. God. <laughs> like, talk about men amongst boys because uh, Noah Cobb. I mean, young. Not exactly small, but Prince, my God! <laughs> yeah, and they had like a six-six like center back. To, like it's yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. So anyway, Connor, any of your final thoughts about the? Uh, final thoughts. Yeah, we'll say I'm I'm happy we don't play those games at home. Don't. Yeah. I, if if I were if I were like somebody that had to go and go to that game and like. It's the one game you chose to go to in a season. I would be very disappointed. Yeah, but right. It's like almost yeah. like the whenever the whenever the teams like repay the fans for like their tickets on like like on away days. I'm like almost that's how I would feel. Like if I if yeah, this yeah. was the kind of performance that would put up. In the, right. Ask for a subsidized ticket because that's. Yeah. I, it, yeah, I would be very disappointed. Right, because there there always are fans that go to these away matches and imagine like just I mean really largely just most of the past three years like any of the games you go to away it's like oh, okay you know just just uh, enjoy the city that we're going to because uh, <laughs> yeah I want to get I want to get one of those people on the show and be like what is why why did you go to this game <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean hats off I mean, to you but holy crap you know Right, because like Toronto, cool city. Like, yeah, that go to that city, yes. But uh, you know, <laughs> Columbus, or uh, you know, uh, man, like there's some other just dire cities that I w- I would just not ever yeah. think like. And, oh yeah, and, you know, compounding onto what Connor said too, like it's, you know, it. If we're going, if we're always going to be sporting a weakened, a significantly weakened team on our international break games, I mean, why not put it, you know, on an away game? Like, if we're statistically unlikely to win that game anyway, um, just throw it on one of our more challenging games that we have to play, regardless that we're probably not going to win anyway. So at that point, we can just be stronger in games that we have a better chance at winning, and then we will surely get those three points more than you know having in you know if we're playing at home and on an international break and we have a weakened team we're playing up against like maybe a decent or good squad that's not as depleted as us and we lose like that sucks that really hurts but like this it's like it's we can easily be like yeah the game in toronto away throw away completely throw it away and on that thought i mean connor do you think because the one surprise in the lineup shonda silva didn't start was that something in that mindset where, you know, Pineda, after having coached in this league for a little bit of time now, like, okay, maybe I'm saving his legs a little bit. I think it's a little bit of that. I think I think last game, didn't he come off a bit earlier? 
I remember correctly, came up. I think he was kind of dealing with the heavy legs already thin, so I would assume we're kind of like just a game that's not really like if he makes an impact, then that's great off the bench, but if he has not then it doesn't really matter. It's kind of just a throwaway game anyway. But I kind of I kind of like the decision. If there's anyone that needs to be rested, there's no reason to push them into a game that we realistically are never going to do anything in. So if it was a defender, I would say I would be more inclined to start them. But as an attacker, especially not being like a focal like striker, I, I'm perfectly fine with it. I think it's better to save legs now and in games in the future than pick up one point away from home. It's just mm -hmm. that big of a yeah. deal in my eyes. It, it's... It's sad that we have to do this uh, in yeah. MLS. That you have to be pragmatic in this sense. If if it were. You know, and... Man, that just... <laughs> it just... I don't know. It just goes back to the argument. Right? But anyway. Uh, but yeah, Connor. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. For the first time, thank and uh, yeah, we looked uh, on. He, he was on uh, before, I think, but I don't know if he had his he camera on. on. I was on. La I was on last season, but I didn't, yeah, I, yeah. Didn't get it. I, I wasn't on my on the camera. Exactly. Yeah. On so I, pleasure to meet you finally. I, exactly. Yes. I was like, I've never seen you raise your I have to see all the, one of the games. <laughs> Absolutely, come say hi. I just, I just sit on the exact opposite side. Yeah, so, we, uh, we hear that can be tough. Yeah, a lot of people say that. So maybe we'll we'll get we'll get like a golf cart and we'll drive around or something. Yeah. Go, go underneath they get golf carts down there all the time yeah so. we'll figure it out we'll yeah, figure it out but yeah thank you for having me on no, no problem Absolutely. take care buddy all right we will be uh joined by our last guest in a second and uh let me see if we have any more questions before we get there gavin says i think we'll beat toronto at the bends in june so yeah, we are doing it in june cool i'm 95 percent sure and seeing they tore his acl so they probably won't be as good as they have been so far this season Dang. yeah acl oh i mean yeah because i i mean i agree to a degree i don't know if i'm 90 percent sure but insigne did have a face of absolute agony and like you know that he knows it's bad and he did indicate his knee as he was walking off um so yeah. i don't know how bad it is or whatever but he he did there was there is evidence to suppose that that could be the case um so you know again sucks for to see that in an athlete you never want to see that um but uh, you're right if signe is not going to be on the team in june we're going to have less to deal with on defense man that's I feel bad for him. That's you never want to see that. That's man, dang. Because <laughs> again, you know, you want to see the the league succeed. We we're trying to anyway. <laughs> right. But man, that is because yeah, his head's his head was in his hands. He yeah, but the fact that he walked off that that's what was actually incredible. Like if he did actually do it, his knee. Wow, <laughs> how did how was he able to walk off? I yeah, guess the adrenaline. Yeah, because we saw with Joseph, he wasn't able to walk. So, um, I mean, there's different kinds of ACL injuries. Um, it could be less intensive. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Um, I mean, I hope he gets better soon. I hope it's you know nothing serious because you, you hate to see that for any kind of athlete. Um, and to be fair, though, if you do your knee at any point of the season it's probably better to do it this point because then at least you when you return you know there's a full season ahead for you yeah pretty much yeah i mean like, basically yeah. like what happened with joseph right but that's the thing at his age well that's gonna be really tough to come back from yeah yeah Absolutely. He's that type of player too. Like he, he requires that explosiveness. So, I mean, it's not exactly like he's not like, a, you know, a, a burner, but he is someone that I think requires, you know, that little burst of pace. Dang. Um, all right, so it looks like Niall might be caught up with uh, post-game festivities. So. Um, we <laughs> Uh, we right. can we can move on to the wheel segment. Uh, we 
Hit this the up. The wheel of forfeit. The wheel of forfeit. That's right. So everyone knows the rules. Everyone knows how to play. It's going to be AJ versus me as usual. Um, let me see if I can get this. Oh, actually, no, before we do that, I mean, this is still part of this, but before we do that, AJ has one of his forfeits that he has to do. So I have the video loaded up so we can pop that on and watch it real quick. And AJ, you can describe what it is you were asked to do. Well, I think the uh, the video does describe it a little bit, so uh, okay. I guess we could probably let it play. No preamble, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me get that. All right, here it is, and play. All right, what's up, fam? It's your boy, AJ, and we're going to listen to what Michael said as the worst song ever by... Oh, by the way, this was not sent by me. This was sent by Gavin, by the way. He sent this to me to give to you, so you can blame him. Nathan on YouTube, and you can play this while we're on the stream, I guess, a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. You should drop the, uh, the the YouTube link All right. in the chat. I'll grab so everybody it. Everybody can get it afterward. I'll, I'll throw it in afterwards. You can look at uh, AJ's face. He looks a little pained here. What What were you experiencing? What were you going through, AJ? Uh, well, it's it's triggering. Matters? It's highly triggering because <laughs> it's uh it's alarm sounds. It's basically. Is it actually uh, music? Yeah. I haven't heard it. Oh, it's music. It's uh, very <laughs> loosely in the term, but it's music. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, it's a alarm clock sound, like the classic oh. uh, wake up in a haste. You know, that is triggering. I, yeah. Yeah, like I, my alarm is like <laughs> is like super positive now, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you know. It's almost ethereal sounding. It's Just ethereal, so, huh? Yeah, so I wake up not in the haste and in a good mood versus like, you know, in a like, what what time is it? <laughs> right. Uh, let me see if I can find that video and put it in the, the chat real quick. But yeah, the, uh, um, the worst song ever. Yeah, the worst song ever by Nathan. Who yeah. I, I actually know who this YouTuber is. That's funny. No, do you? Uh, yeah, he's so like he's the guy who uh, back on like America's Got Talent like many 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 years ago did the like the history of dance thing where he did like one dance every like five seconds like a new dance every five seconds for like several minutes. And it was like the evolution of dance or something like this or something. You can find it on YouTube. But anyway, that this is the same dude. And then he went and decided to go do YouTube instead of um, whatever else he was doing. Um, all right. Yeah, so I'll drop that in the chat so you guys can see what that was about. Um, and then we can move on to the wheel. And we'll, like I said, it will be... AJ and me once again. Let's see who it lands on. Hopefully it's AJ once again. I'm sure everyone agrees with me. Uh, oh, it's me. Damn it. It just barely went to me. Just barely. That's instant karma, man. <laughs> just barely. Okay. So, we got Tiger Skills Challenge yelling, I love Breck Shea in public. That'll be wonderful if I have to do that again. Uh, spicy Challenge. Dressing up for a stream and listening to a song you don't like. Um, the and, uh, for next week because AJ still has another one to do, which is dressing up for the stream. That will be what he does uh, for next week. Uh, so let's see what I have to do now. And we're gonna be refreshing these a bit for next week as well. So look for some new stuff. And it's the spicy challenge. Okay, so I get to do that oh, again. Yes. All right. All right. Cool, cool. I will uh, power through the spicy challenge mm -hmm. once again. I'm gonna get some really spicy stuff. So yeah, yeah. Let's figure out what uh, what that might entail here. I, I got mm. some. I got some stuff. I'll show you. So oh, okay, all right. Yeah, uh, Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I got my like my father-in-law bought me a, just this big like chest of 
hot sauces from around the world. So we'll see how that goes. Ooh. Well, I really want to see that now. Yeah. So let me just check the chat and see if there's anyone else with anything on here. Um, do, 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 do. Can you send the link in the Discord of AJ listening to it? I couldn't hear it from here. Yeah, no, you, it's not going to play the song because we don't want to get copyright struck. So um, you'll just have to play the song along with AJ's video in the, you know, rewatching of this one, I guess. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, I know it's not the healthiest, um, you know, like when you have a, a audio medium on a visual medium. So, but regardless, the, the pain and the discomfort still is real and still happened. So, <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that wasn't the worst song ever, but it was a triggering song. Yeah. I mean, the dude's pretty damn popular. It, that song is 4.1 million views. For for things, I'm sure, much like this, where, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know if you know those, like, manic happy birthday songs, but, yeah, I feel like it's right in line with that. Like, he... <laughs> He just, he did really well in figuring out a title for his video that would get searched a lot. And true, true, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And there's a reason why he's very popular on YouTube, so. All yeah. right, guys, that's about it. Let me check, just see if anyone else has anything else to say. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, Gavin said he just, he forgot to mention that uh, Toronto had interesting names like Prince um Uwusu and spicer so yeah those those were those were interesting names i'll give them that unique names yep i mean those are fun names but it's no rocket rita rita that's true so. that is true goaded best name ever that is a solid name awesome well all right guys um that's it for us aj if you want to sign us out <clears throat> all right well everyone thank you so much for watching enjoy the rest of your saturday nights Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and we will see you yep. in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody.